Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Transfiguration of the Lord Parish as we gather for Mass to give thanks to God and pray for our community, our family. Today is a special day for our parish community, especially for one of our parishioners, Nicholas, who will be receiving First Holy Communion today. So we celebrate with him and his family as we begin this celebration with our opening hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you died for the sins of all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your praise arises from every nation. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your mercy blots out every sin. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon the earth. Among all nations, your salvation. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exalt because you rule the people in equity, the nations on the earth you guide. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glorify in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be? but life from death, the dead. For the gifts of God and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, you have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they now have disobeyed in order that by virtue of mercy shown to you, they may too now receive mercy. For God delivered all disobedience that he might have mercy upon us all. The word of the Lord. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. 
But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the past year or so, it's only a handful of times that have come across on TV the show The Big Bang Theory, one of the most famous shows in the last number of years. But there was one joke that stuck out to me in the episode I watched. Howard, one of the characters, said some type of snarky comment, and Raj said, Howard doesn't mean anything by it. He's from a sarcastic village called Brooklyn, <laughs> which reminded me of our favorite sister from Brooklyn, Sister Kathy. Those of you who are longtime St. Mary's parishioners, of course, remember well Sister Kathy. Anyone who's visiting or who has kind of joined the 930 experience recently, Sister Kathy served at St. Mary's for a long time, and she was, is a, um, she's down in Somerset now, she is a, a sarcastic member of the Brooklyn family. I saw her last week at Bishop Fian's graduation, and I was telling her about my upcoming vacation. I said, Sister Kathy, I'm going to Falmouth. I'm just looking forward to doing nothing. And she right away said, oh, you mean like you always do nothing? <laughs> this is what we loved about Sister Kathy, though. Always she had a quick comment. Always in love, but willing to kind of be in jest also. Witty comments. Interesting rebukes. And this is a characteristic that I think sometimes we forget that Jesus had. Jesus was not sarcastic, but he always in the gospel has the quick comeback. The witty rebuke to the Pharisees. And he stumps them. Think of a few examples that come to him. And they ask, a woman is married to a man who dies and then marries her brother, his brother. And then seven times over, marries his brother and his brother and his brother in heaven. Who will this woman be married to? And Jesus says, in heaven there is no marriage. And then remember, they, bring a, they, they ask Jesus, should your disciples, if it's all about the kingdom of God, should your disciples pay tax? To the king on earth, Caesar. And he says, take a coin out of your pocket. Whose image is on that coin? Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. And even with his own disciples, Peter comes to him, do I have to forgive my brother seven times? And Jesus says, no, you have to forgive him seven times seven, or seventy-seven, or seven times seventy times. Today's gospel, though, is a little bit different because it's not Jesus who stumps the crowd or the Pharisees. It's the woman who stumps Jesus. And in this woman, the Canaanite woman, we see the life of Christ being lived out at first might seem like an offensive exchange. We don't give the food of children to dogs. The woman quickly comes back, but even the dogs eat the scraps from the table. We see the woman living a life of faithful engagement with the Lord. We don't follow a God who is aloof, and just commands, and we're supposed to just do it. We follow a God who became one of us, Jesus, who argued with the people of his time and allowed himself to be argued with. 
all in the context of faith. You don't argue with someone that you don't believe in. You don't really engage with someone who you don't care about. The woman could have just given up. But she believed Jesus was, go was to offer her something good. She believed Jesus had her and her family's salvation as his priority. And so she faithfully engaged with him. We even see this faithful engagement in the greatest model of faith, Mary. Yesterday was the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. Let's remember that moment when the angel Gabriel comes to her, provides this amazing invitation. She does eventually say, yes, let it be done according to your word. But what happens in between? She asks a question. How will this happen? And the angel explains. It's a model to us of what our faith life is to be, what our relationship with Christ is to be like, a faithful engagement. I think sometimes we're afraid. We're afraid of engaging with God. We're afraid of kind of saying it as we feel it. We think, oh, God doesn't want to hear that from me. But today's gospel, his encounter, Jesus' encounter with the Canaanite woman shows us that true faith is lived out in an engagement with Christ, even if that means a messy engagement. And if we're willing to take that step in our spiritual life and ask from Christ what we know is good, tell Him how we feel, even when things aren't going well, then we can hear with the Canaanite woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's goodness, we offer to Him our needs and our prayers. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer that church authorities do everything in their power to preserve the bond of unity in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That civil authorities work effectively with the private sector to provide adequate food, work, and shelter for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That communities ensure effective help for those who suffer from mental or emotional illness, we pray to the Lord. That those who are suffering due to the current pandemic sweeping across the globe will be given the assistance that they require, whether that be medical, financial, or emotional, as we continue to battle this aggressive virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That struggling farmers use the resources at their disposal during this time of drought to develop ways that, that they can continue to feed the hungry so that we may have enough food 
and bread to feast upon the bread of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That at this Eucharistic table, especially those who have been estranged, be reconciled to God and to one another in this Eucharistic, in this Eucharist of love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed be given a home in God's kingdom. We remember in a particular way at this Mass, Paul Forgetti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That longings we hold in our hearts be heard and granted by the mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you are first time here with us in the parking lot for Mask, the collection is done a little differently, as you might expect. Instead of passing a basket, there are two baskets up at the front um, in the communion line. So if you brought a contribution, feel free to um, drop it in the baskets on your way to communion. You can always, of course, drop them at the office during the week. Um, those of you who are joining us on live stream, I think you know the drill. The electronic uh, link is on the top of the post section of the Facebook page. Thank you for your generosity.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, Lord, the Lord accept, accept the, the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal, for having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. As Father Jack mentioned at the beginning of Mass, Nicholas will be making his first Holy Communion. We ask that you allow Nicholas to come out to receive First Communion, giving his parents and other uh, family members a chance to take photos so that they can remember this special day. Afterwards, everyone else, please feel free to come forward, uh, making sure that you keep a social distance.
ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ Let us pray. May partakers of Christ through these sacraments we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. One announcement is that tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live, Father Rodney and I will do another fireside chat, which will be an opportunity for us to talk about the next stage of opening up the parish and ways that we can uh, worship publicly together. Also a chance to just have a little bit of fun together as we uh, broadcast from Father Rodney's sitting room next to the electronic fireplace. Um, 
uh, a last word of congratulations to Nick as we're so happy for you Nick and for your family that you've come to this day to receive Christ for the first time in the Eucharist even in these strange times but I think it added a little bit of fun to the day so we wish you uh, we wish you well hopefully see you soon anything else there are two ways to exit the parking lot. One is directly out to Park Street here. The other is actually through the rectory parking lot. Thanks to everyone in the parking lot who's helped uh, with, with uh, traffic control today. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.